just wondered, have you ever considered promoting citizens' income as like a solution? Do you know anything about citizens' income? I mean, that's a Green Party, long-term Green Party um, policy. Do you mean like a, a local, um, local money? If, well, no. no it, means that, it means that everybody gets a basic income. Oh, everybody, um, like, universal, like a universal income. And everybody gets an income. Is, so it isn't, isn't that called socialism? <laughs> <laughs> so no, seriously, I mean, yeah, yeah that, that's my philosophy. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I think this is quite a new, well, it's not new, but it's something that um, people are beginning to recognise as sort of thing like a universal income, which will solve a lot of these problems, obviously. I just wondered if it was part of your... It, it's certainly not part of a unite strategy, I can assure you. Yeah. But nevertheless, um, I, and I think it would be incredibly hard to move on it. But I think there are, you know, it, it, it um, takes a, a particular ideology, doesn't it? Whereby, um, you're, you know, and yes, it's fair. And yes, I mean, I can't care with it. I just think it would be hard to implement in the, in the current climate. Yeah, I'd just like to come back on that because there has been a recent uh, development on that. Uh, you, now, uh, in Switzerland, they're actually going to have a referendum on this. Now, Switzerland is not a progress, very progressive country. Uh, I mean, you, know, you will have noticed that they had a referendum against further EU immigration uh, recently um, and voted to stop that. But they're actually voting on a measure that is pretty much the same as a citizen's income that every citizen, Swiss citizen, will be entitled to a basic income uh, regardless of, of uh, their circumstances. So it, it, it isn't a dead idea, you know, it's very wide. Would you like to uh, say something, John? Yeah, just a little bit about, uh, there's, there's a European-wide initiative on the citizen's income that yeah, the European initiative on citizens' in income, trying to get, uh, I can't remember what the threshold is, but, uh, but so, you know, so, you know, so, you know, so many people register in, in support of that, and then it, 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 it will be uh, discussed in the, the floor of the, uh, of the European Parliament, I think that's the target. So it's, it's certainly the live issue, you're wide. Oh yeah, I mean it certainly is the case that I mean there should be a minimum that no one falls below, and I know there's the, you know, sort of the, the so-called living wage, which local authorities have um, signed up to but I still think we've got a long way to go and it, it really is I mean it, it shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary or it shouldn't be any extra, extraordinary to aim for uh, a kind of basic level that no one should go below it was kind of like the basics of the welfare state wasn't it but we've moved a long way from it unfortunately yes hello I think um, I might have associated you with uh, the unions being appealed, exhorted to go into the community, to look to the community, is that, is that the right line? Um, my role? Well, I, I heard, I think you were saying, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that right? Yeah, my, um, my role is to coordinate community groups and encourage people to form community branches, yeah, so it was a new initiative from Unite. Well, it just, it, with, just on the start of a green issue, um, I think my local council has, has got a green day with people growing their own food and, a, and it's part of a, a, not a very well endowed area. But I wonder what uh, plans we have, all these crises coming, which one do we go for? Which ones do we support? It's always difficult. I wonder whether it might be possible to consider looking for links, for instance. I mean, uh, Atos, uh, DNATR, I've been to a, a very visible afternoon today uh, on a health forum to look at uh, a do not attempt to resuscitate if you have a condition. Uh, there's another link with it. Does that link, I ask the question, with this uh, uh, surrendering your uh, health um, information to the ambulance service or to the cloud now? or not a do opt out to keep your health records in your local GP, if there is such a thing anymore. The NHS, the joke logo of the NHS now, which is a profiteering commissioning group. Uh, Atos, who uh, we mentioned before, all these different, um, different crises arising. Does anybody 
see the cracks between the bricks. What have they got in store for us? And to try to be one jump ahead instead of trying to bat each crisis across the net as it comes. And it, just to finish, just to, some ideas. Um, it started with a green question because I wonder whether they want people to grow their own food. It's a pinching a green uh, idea from 30 odd years ago or more. Uh, but it got a tinge of uh, dig for victory about it to me. I'm a bit, uh, a bit of a conspiracy theorist here. So just there are just a few ideas I'm trying to uh, surface with. I think that. Um you raised some very important points there because I think that um, you know there are individual issues as you highlighted. That's why I was glad that this session was you know based around austerity. And increasingly, we we would argue that um, in terms of holding public meetings, etc., it's around the more general theme of austerity because um, cuts are affecting people in different ways. But one thing for sure is that they're disproportionately hitting those at the lower end of the economic scale and who are being battered in all ways. So for example, um, I live in Liverpool 8. If I uh, wasn't working, I would be hit by the bedroom tax. I would then have to, if I was sick, I would have to queue up to try and get my appointment in the now privately run Prince's Park Health Centre. And when I was given an appointment and returned, the likelihood is there wouldn't be a doctor there. So all the time, the point I'm making is that um, these things become cumulative. And for some people, it's not just one issue. It's not just the bedroom tax. It is all of those things. And I think that um, what we kind of do as a community branch is to um, support people with their own individual issues as and when they arise and utilise the experience and expertise of people. I, I know I've been at meetings with you and keep our NHS public with Sam and people and um, I think we're incredibly lucky to have uh, Sam and Greg etc involved in the CASA community branch because of the wealth of knowledge and experience they bring to that. I mean we had Andy Burnham, we invited Andy Burnham to attend and, just, uh, and answer questions on the NHS and you could see he was quite taken aback by the uh, quality and nature of the questions he was asked and um, asked for some of the points to be put in writing because clearly they went beyond things that he had dealt with and I say that because um, you never underestimate the experience and expertise that is around communities but I think um, when you're saying dig for victory. I think this there is, I think it goes to the heart of what I would term an insidious nationalism um, that is emerging which I actually find really offensive and I think it's it started um, around the time of Stop the War um, when, when some of when, well not some of us, a lot of us were out there campaigning against uh, Going, going to Iraq, going to war in Iraq. And I think that there's been a whole shift there. Um, and, you know, I know now it's not the place to get into all that, but I think there has been the development of a nationalism, which I think is really unhealthy, particularly when we start talking um, about immigration. Um, because what, it, what uh, it really brings out is this uh, uh, incipient racism within the country and I think we've got to challenge it. So I, I kind of agree, it's not kind of, you know, you know, 30 odd years or even more ago, you know, I was certainly growing up, you know, I was like your original good life, living on a small hill and uh, growing things organically, you know. But what I see now is kind of a little dig for victory thing, as you say, it's a miles away from the hippie philosophy of uh, growing your own, yeah. Uh, thank you, Sheila. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to bring it back to the bedroom tax for a minute here. Um, my colleague and associate, Ruth, yeah, I, I just I hope she doesn't mind this, but for, for example, I, I'm affected by the bedroom tax. I don't have a spare room. It's my daughter's bedroom. It has been for nine years, and I hope it will carry on being. But we've been saying since the start that you can use human rights, and people literally laughed at us. People like Joe Hale, a housing consultant, was saying that you could use room size 
as a grounds for appealing against the bedroom tax. He got laughed at as well. We both, um, you know, we've been around long enough to see these come to fruition now. But Ruth's appeal went to kind of like what that gentleman over there was saying in terms of this goes to the heart of what it's about because Ruth took the decision to appeal on the grounds, uh, on socio-economic grounds, which is to do with like the minimum level that somebody's allowed to live on. And that was a really brave attempt because it was, there's no protection in law for people with social, low socio-economic status. You have to patchwork different laws together to try and come up with anything. And if, if Ruth manages, uh, even if she doesn't succeed, she's, at least she's tried. Because I, I think one of the things that we, what the Greens might want to consider really picking up and pushing and moving forward with is a law that makes it illegal to discriminate against people from a low economic, social economic status. And we, that's something that we Thank you. Did we have another right question over here? Uh, Hi there, Chris Hart from the North Lake Green Party. Um, it was wonderful and inspiring. I, um, I wish I hadn't been late because I only caught the tail end of um, what you were saying, Sheila, which is so inspiring to hear all the work you're doing in uh, different communities. Um, I think the trouble is the ideology, linking all these things together, the ideology of politics is bankrupt, the neoliberal agenda is bankrupt. All the costs of that are being put down to you know, lower socio-economic people to pay for, and we know that, everyone knows that, but there isn't any ideas in the mainstream to address this, and you know, that's why I'm in the Green Party, political, like, political ideology that's different, that thinks in a completely different way about society, um, you know, I'm the Green Left, and I think you know, we have to have a Green Socialist solution myself. Um, but being in Lancaster, you know, we've been on the cabinet of the council there for 15 years. Um, you know, quite influential, and it is amazing what you can do with a few councillors and um, just a little bit of imagination. Uh, we haven't brought in the, um, the council tax rebate changes that every other council in Lancashire has brought in, and that's been because um, Andy, who's a uh, Lancaster Green councillor, um, myself, and some others, um, set up an anti-cuts group. We work with all the groups in that to petition the councillors. The Labour Party were going to pass it through, but actually when they saw that the unions and other people were actually challenging it, inspired by, by us to do that, um, they had to change their plans. We just passed the budget again this year, not bringing it in, passed by one vote, I think, was it this week? Um, so, you know, we can do lots of things as a political party, and you know, as we were saying in an earlier workshop, you know, working, trying to, trying to get councillors, but also more instrumentally working with the community groups to bring them together because the Labour Party, unfortunately in Lancaster, the unions and the Labour Party, they're comatose, they've supported the Labour Party so far, they don't know what to do, they're doing nothing, they're doing absolutely nothing. So we are the only people really that are pushing a different agenda. And just one more thing, on Monday we're setting up a listening space for people on benefits um, or who are being sanctioned just to come do peer-to-peer -peer talking, we're holding the space, they can be there all day and hopefully out of that will come their own uh, actions and movements and really supported to do that. And that's really easy, we're just hiring a room for, for a day, every one day each week, people just come and do peer, peer support and we hold the space um, So can I just ask, say something, because um, I did have things um, when I first began with uh, Lancaster, I was hoping to develop something up there and it didn't happen. So if there's uh, any openings where you feel there might be interest in forming community groups or branches, then please get in touch with me. And someone who is in our own branch in Liverpool, I don't know if she has moved, but she was moving up to Lancaster and was keen to develop stuff up there. So just the things you're saying fit in ideally with um, our, our own um, actions around it. And as, as was said about Ruth, what is amazing there is like, you know, Ruth challenged all this and, you know, sort of she came from left field with it, arguing the point around, um, you know, the money that you receive should not be used to subsidise your rent, and there is actually case law there, and it and it was it was cited. And um, if you read her judgment, you see that um, she was given grounds to appeal on that issue, and I think she stands a really good chance of succeeding the second time round. Thank you. I'm just going to take the lady with the dark hair. Just 
first, and then you, Howard, and then this gentleman. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, with this um, bedroom tax, and you know, like when people are caring for other people and they're not able to get their sleep because they haven't got that spare room, is there anything like through the European Court of Human Rights uh, that, that could be done? And I just wonder also, is there going to be like any sort of, you know, just thinking back to the, um, when we used to have the, the poll tax, sort of like demonstrations and things, is there, is there going to be any like, attempt to have some kind of like general strike or some kind of protest about it. Two issues there. I think the people around the bedroom tax initially made the mistake of saying this is another poll tax and it's not because the poll tax affected everybody. The bedroom tax um, attacks those at the lower socio-economic um, scale. And so that's why we've we've been we've had demonstrations, we've organised them, but you do not get people out the same way you got them out for the um, poll tax, and that's a reality. You don't get people out on the streets the way you did in the 80s. It just doesn't happen. Very rarely. We had a huge NHS demo in Manchester at uh, the end of September, which got people out. Likewise, um, the other October in London, the huge demo. Um, but in those of us who, you know, sort of activists, well, it, it is hard. In relation to the human rights in the European Court of Human Rights, you have to um, exhaust all domestic legal remedies. So before something got to Europe, you would have to go through all the courts here um, at whatever level or be rejected by them before. You can't just, you know, sort of pole vault into Europe. But I could see, certainly see that happening um, in relation to the comments made um, initially by the UN person. Um, who came and I know was in Liverpool as well uh, last year. So it, for us the issue is around human rights. It's not, and, and a variety of it for the offspring of parents who are split. It's denying a child the right to family life if they're used to sharing uh, two homes. And suddenly, um, and it does tend to be the father um, who is expected to give up the so-called spare bedroom. And um, for so many reasons, human rights comes into, and I think more and more so. So I really like the idea of actually broadening things out to challenge it from a human rights perspective, because it brings in that moral argument that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I'm at risk of repeating something that's probably already been said, but I just wanted to emphasise that um, we, we do need to work in alliances with people, and that is the most important thing. We're, we're under attack on almost every front at the moment, aren't we? Which, every direction you look in, we're under attack from this coalition government. And I think the gentleman in front of me here, you know, said it about Lancaster. We've got to work with trade unions, we've got to work with the anti cuts groups, and dare I say, even possible, the, 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 possibly other political parties as well, to fight back against austerity, you know, in, in the round. It's the only way we're going to do it. We, you know, we've got um, a massive assault on everything that we care about, basically, and we have to build those alliances and, and work with other people. <clears throat> Am I on? Yeah, hi. Right. Uh, Andrew Kay, I'm a Lancaster uh, Green Party councillor. I think it's very important, picking up what the guy was saying there earlier, which battles do you fight on? And um, I agree with everybody that, that we are under attack and that we do need to fight back on, on things like the bone tax. And, and I mean, the, 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 the anti catch group I formed in, in Lancaster two or three years ago, it was a deliberate attempt to try and step outside, form broader alliances with basically anybody, even Labour or the left, to, 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 to fight the cuts. But I think there's also another need, there is a big need for us to spell out as Green Socialists as what we stand for. A lot of our, most of our campaigns are obviously defensive, but what are we about? And I think uh, Natalie Bennett in her earlier speech, you know, her own remarks, was was, was touching on that, exactly what kind of system, because when I work, a lot of people will say, oh that's bad, that's hitting so-and-so, but 
They'll come out with what Thatcher said originally, there is no alternative. And we need to hammer that home. There is an alternative, um, and this is the alternative. It's not that we reject, just we reject the cuts, but how we would run our community. That's the difficulty. That's why those of us on the left, green left, have always fallen down in the past, because when it comes down to that question, about what we should do. So I, th I would urge people to get involved with things like initiatives, the People's Assembly, um, um, and, and where, where there is an alternative economic model being formulated, I think that's where we need to be working on. Some of us working in Occupy had to start to look at economics right from the very start. You know, from, I remember talks on fractional banking, you know, fractional reserve banking, and understand the economic system in order to put the alternative there together. Because when it comes down to it, when it comes to the general election or local elections, people will vote, they'll vote Labour maybe with heavy hearts, not thinking that anything very much will change. So we need to be that, we need to offer that change, that radical change that, 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 uh, that this country needs so much. Uh, thanks for that. Did you want to so, only just to agree really that I do think the, um, uh, that there's a kind of negative uh, thing behind voting um, because there's no alternative and um, I think there's tremendous complacency amongst politicians that they'll just be voted in and you know you, that's reflected by really low turnouts and you know the constituency that some of us live in. Um, it, Riverside is probably the lowest I think, uh, one of the lowest in the country and I think the lowest on Merseyside, so um, you know, and, and it is really so people can just assume they're going to get in. I think the people's assemblies are a good opportunity. I'm speaking at um, Preston People's Assembly on Tuesday, and um, I, I think the more that people just throw up new ideas, um, it's slightly refreshing because I think the biggest turnoff for a lot of people is that traditional, uh, you know, sort of mould of. Um, meetings and parties which bore people rigid and I think we've got to break out of that and actually people have got to believe in you know their own ability to change things. Uh, thanks Sheila and um, well uh, thanks to everybody uh, for attending. Uh, I'd like to thank Sheila uh, for coming down and uh, talking to us from uh, Unite the Union and uh, Paul and Ruth uh, from South Liverpool Against Poverty. I hope that you've got something out of the meeting, uh, just to really reiterate that so as the welfare reform is right, we, we, we've got to look at how we respond to this situation. And uh, it may be uh, you know, controversial, but I know that this year, when we go knocking on people's doors, asking for their votes, uh, in, certainly in the poorer areas where I live and work, we're, we're going to be faced with people who are in dire situations, who actually want help. And I think that there are lots of ways in which we can get involved. We can get involved in our local cuts campaigns, we can uh, get involved in the People's Assembly Against Austerity, uh, but there are also very easy practical uh, ways. Uh, I, I do think, and again this may be controversial, but all lead uh, candidates, target candidates and councillors should be sufficiently aware of at least council tax and housing benefit regulations that they can actually guide people through that and solve their problems. You know, it isn't rocket science. You know, um, people can learn it. And on the wider benefits, I'd uh, like to recommend to all, all Green parties that they might want to consider investing in a benefits handbook. Now, there is this very good book. It's uh, produced every year by the Disability Rights UK. And uh, it, it, it covers everything. It, it covers uh, job seekers allowance, employment support allowance, uh, disability living allowance, all benefits, gives you all of the regulations, how to go about appealing, 
etc. It, it, it really is very useful. I use it all the time, every day, whenever I, my neighbours or at work when my uh, customers come in with problems. I've actually taught myself to be able to help them to navigate through the system and I, I would uh, recommend to local Green parties that they consider investing in this. It, it's about £30, uh, £12.99 to uh, people who are on uh, disability uh, benefits. But for that you also get regular updates whenever they change the law you will get you know an email telling you uh, what has changed you know and uh, keeps you aware of the legal uh, challenges etc so there are practical things that we can do and just to make ourselves more aware of what is happening uh, out there so once again thanks for attending